Hello, everybody. How are you out there? Welcome to Let's Talk About It. We are so excited to be back. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Everybody doing today? Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. I am so excited because as you can see, we have a guest host with us today, Ulrich Johnson, my brother and my friend, yes. Mr. Actor, singer, songwriter, all the great stuff. Former NFL, Mr. Man is here in the house. So thank you for joining us today. Oh, um, I'm, I'm, it's my pleasure as always. That's right. He's sitting in for Nicole who is traveling for the holidays and Toya is gonna join us. And we have the wonderful Latrice Pace coming on today. So it is going to be <laughs> yes. 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 So I thought it was going to be great because of the fact that we are all going into, can you believe that we are in December going into the holidays right now? Next week, Friday is Christmas. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It's crazy. Yes. Yes. Very <laughs> yes. Like you blinked and here we are. So, yeah. Um, Latrice is actually starring in Black Nativity. If anyone has not seen Black Nativity, of course it's virtual this year, but it is, and I think you've been in Black Nativity, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you talk about Creme singers. You talk about, I mean, everybody. It is the most amazing show. It's so powerful. Yeah. And it takes place every year right here in Atlanta. So when this COVID virus is over, you can go in person. But right now, yes. So um, it's something you don't want to miss. So she's starring in that. So I thought, well, hey, with the holidays, it'd be good to have her come on. And so she's very excited about joining us um, shortly. So what do you all have planned for the holidays? What are you doing, Chris? What are you doing? What do, what do you have planned, anybody? I have nothing planned. <laughs> <laughs> I guess because it's COVID, I you don't really want to go something big. You just, <laughs> I'm uh, like, you don't, <laughs> don't want to go over anyone's house, per se. Uh, so it would be me and Kyler and Kaylin and Rob. <laughs> <laughs> For the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. I have got their That's gifts. I'm like, hey, we'll make a grand Christmas for you, bake cookies, do all the fun stuff you want to do. But normally right. we travel to family houses and we're all right. over the place. And today, you know, right now we're just kind of like, let's just keep it in. Let's just keep it into immediate family right now. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And I mean, all right, what are you all gonna be doing for You know Christmas? what? We are daily getting getting that uh Christmas list down that continues to go on the refrigerator and things get added every night. Yeah, for some yeah. reason. But you know, we're we're slowly working on that. But Christmas is gonna be quiet, you know, similar to what Chris said. It's gonna be quiet. We're gonna we are gonna try to go for New Year's to uh see my mother. Um, we were supposed to have this big gala, uh, which we planned last year, but we canceled those plans. But she does want to see uh, somebody. So we're going to just kind of cool. surprise her and um, and be safe about it and go see her and pray in the new year kind of thing. But Christmas is going to be simple. It's going to be pretty simple. Which, but we're going to enjoy it, though. We did the Christmas light thing last night. If you guys haven't seen that yet, try to – and you have some kids that want to check it out. Uh, it's at Whitewater. I don't think they. I don't think they've done that all the time, but it's. Um, they've done it. They did it this year, and it's really nice. It's right at Whitewater, and you have to. I think you got to reserve the tickets. Um, you have to have it reserved before you get there. Okay. But it's really, really nice. Yeah, and the, the kids were excited. We surprised them with that last night. So we're getting kudos. We're getting some points. Wow. I heard it was beautiful. I've heard it was. So I'm thinking about taking it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You should, yeah, should. Make sure mm -hmm. you go online and see what dates are still available. But yeah, because they're sold out fast. Are yeah. they? Yeah. What do you do? Just watch the lights go up, or is it a light show, or what? Yeah, is it's that? a light. It's a light show. It's pretty much, um, you know, you pretty much just, uh, you know, you drive through it and really slow, and they have the 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 right. station that you can listen wow. to. But we just went ahead and made our own Christmas music, you know. Had the kids outside the window. We did the Temptations Christmas thing, um, but it, you know it was it was it was it was really nice. And they also had my I'll just say this: my kids won't watch this show, but they really thought it was snowing because they had this thing where snowflakes was coming from the top, and oh, they couldn't really tell. So 
Uh, little Orb was so excited. He was like, Daddy, what are you doing? I'm like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it, was <fun>. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun, though. Yeah. You were like, yes, yeah, snowing. Yeah, yeah snowing. Yeah, snowing, snowing, snowing in Georgia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. Wow. And Denise, what are you going to be doing for Christmas? This Just basically following exactly everything everybody said. <laughs> it, it has been such a moment that you just have to stop. Everybody yeah. just needs to stop yeah. and uh, give themselves permission to celebrate themselves with yeah. other people. I've yeah. heard so many people are doing so many Zoom things. They, in fact, yeah. now they're they're doing family Zooms weekly now. Yeah, I know. I heard. That's I know. Cool. Yes, and I think it's I think it's amazing because now they they got cousins connecting with other cousins and second cousins and mm. it's really been you know amazing. This has been a week for me because I had all these birthdays. You know, my 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 brothers, my oldest brother, my younger brother, my cousin, my nephew, just all these wow. birthdays in December. You know, yeah, got and, it, um, got it. Yeah, and you know, when people have December birthdays, they feel they get cheated for Christmas anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you December? Oh, we no, get cheated. Like all our it's family it. it's yes. never fair. Wow. You get one gift, and it's like, Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> what is your birthday, Chris? I'm December 30th, so I'm at the very end. Oh, wow. <laughs> right before wow. New Year's, bless your heart. So you really I'm like, get I get the whole New Year's. It's just a lot. Oh, I get it all. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, my wow. husband, I have a brother, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. the 20th. And then Lee, Pastor Lee's birthday was uh, New Year's Day. Oh, oh wow. So every, yeah. every New Year's Eve, you would be following Dr. Dollar to do the New Year's Eve celebration. And then everybody would come to our house for breakfast after church. And then we would bring in the new year. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's how we Chris, don't feel bad because I get jit too. I'm January, so people's money's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> like, we just went through the holidays. <laughs> yeah, I'm like right after the new. So I'm like January 12th. So I'm like right, right after. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. yeah. People I'm are like, like, we're gonna budget at this point. We're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, my daughter, they, my you daughter is January 13th. So yes, she gets your daughter is January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're absolutely wow. right. Wow. <laughs> and I want to say that. Um, Stone Mountain does do something you all during Christmas as well. Okay. I did the kids last year. I'm not sure how they're doing it this year, but Stone Mountain does a big light show and nice. you, you used to be able to go for free and sit on the grass. I'm sure we're not all sitting together anymore. Um, mm -hmm. However, yeah. maybe having lawn chairs, people bring lawn chairs and everything. So I'm not sure how they're, um, how they're doing that, but they have a beautiful light show at Stone Mountain. And um, a lot of things you can do out there as well during the holidays. So nice, nice, nice. You know, um, we have a uh, snow mountain where you can actually, you know, instead of yeah. water slide, I've done snow mountain too. Really? And it it's so much fun. A big, big tube, okay. A big tube with your family, like you would like a water slide, the big tubes, and you go down the slopes, and it is so much fun. Yeah. Like snow, it, they they call it. Yes. And where is it? That's a that's a stone mountain. Yeah, and I, I have a feeling they're doing it this year because I mean you're in you're in the um two just with your family or whoever you go with. So you go and you go down the mountain. You're it's ice. Yep. It's a whole thing. Oh my gosh! It is it's so fun. Fun. Oh yeah. Okay. So Dominique is saying hi, Dominique. Dominique is saying that we already purchased tickets for World of Elimination. So that's, yeah. That's yeah, World of Elimination. That's what it's called. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And that's for you. That's where you went. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's yeah. six but, flags, white, white water. Yeah. But I need to snow in my ticket. <laughs> yeah. But snow, snow, mountain. snow mountain. Yes, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. So, so Google that snow mountain, everybody. Snow mountain. Got, well, that down. Down. And because it's cold, snow snow mountain. Mountain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it is fun. It is really fun. So Latrice should be joining us any minute. I'm excited about her yes. on, and uh, I cannot wait. If you have any questions, hey Jen, how are you? I believe we actually have an email address. What's our email address? Uh, let's talk letter at gmail.com. So let's talk letter at gmail.com. Anybody watching, you are able to email us. In January, we're gonna have a a Q and A, whatever topic you want us to talk about, we are going to talk about it. And so, please feel free to email us 
um, Edward, let's talk. Let's talk later. Let's talk later at gmail.com. And I want to bring on the wonderful, beautiful, my sister and my friend, Latrice Pace, should be now on. Yes. Woo! I know. You know OJ, right? So this yes. is like, Yes. 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 yes, yes. Of course you have with your beautiful voices. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and let's talk about it. We're so happy to have you tonight. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I mean, you are just a success story. I have been following you from the time that I met you at Robert Towns or Musical Theater of Hope. And to watch you on the journey of where you come from, you have graced every stage there probably is to grace. I mean, Thank you. what's been happening in your world? Oh my goodness, so much. Um, just living life and as all of us are trying to get through 2020 uh, with our mind intact and our spirituality intact and our physicality intact, just really a lot. Um, I lost my mother in, uh, in Ju July and uh, took a hiatus and just went on a retreat to try to refocus and get back to me because I was her caregiver for like two years. I saw that. I saw that. Um, yeah. I have no regrets. It, it takes so much out of you. Um, it, it, you, you, you become everything that other person need and you kind of put yourself on the back burner or to the side. So uh, when, when she transitioned, I just took a moment to try to get back to me and to the things that what really made me happy and what I really enjoy. And uh, that's where I am now, back on that, back on the journey, back to me, on the journey, back to me. Yeah. How have you, I mean, how have you been able, I, I so I want to say that I did, I'm sorry for your loss of your mom. We know she's celebrating in heaven. You know, and OJ is my fact, his father just transition, you know, as well. So he's recently dealing with this. So I pray this will also bless him as he hears you speak about this. Um, I watched you post things about taking care of your mom. And then I also saw you post things about just, you know, dealing with some depression and also going to therapy. Can you talk to us about some of that? Um, when I decided to go on the retreat, um, I had just wrapped. It is so interesting. I, I've only told this story twice, but it's so interesting that we see people's lives on social media and we see that, oh, they just came off this wonderful tour or, you know, they just performed on this award show and things are great. And, oh, I wish I had their life. And I had just wrapped. Um, the McDonald's virtual tour and was in the lobby on my, waiting on um, trans, ground transportation to take me to the airport. And I was sitting in the lobby boohooing because this was in August, September, because I didn't want to go home. I, I was I was trying to figure out what do I do next? Because two years of my life was about my mother. So um, I was just sitting in the lobby and I was praying and I started Googling, get me out of here or <laughs> uh, retreats near Atlanta, all inclusive retreats near Atlanta. And I found this place and everything in their ad spoke to me. And so they were just, they offered counseling. Um, they offered three meals, healthy meals a day, nutrition counseling. They offered grief counseling. They offered so much fitness classes. They offered everything I was in need of. And uh, a friend asked me, what do you want? I was like, I don't know what I want. I just know I don't want to go back home right now. Wow. So I was sitting there and I was trying to figure out what, was, what makes me happy. And taking care of myself made me happy. You know, working out made me happy and eating well and nourishing myself made me happy. So that's why I said I need to go on a wellness retreat to get back to that. And uh, in counseling, uh, so much came out. And towards the end of my stay there, uh, we had to come up with a plan. OK, how do we transition this to home? And one of the things was, OK, I've got to get a job. I, I saw that Amazon, like what? Like, I mean, 
I cannot <laughs> sit at home because my mother, me and my mother, we shared a room. I cannot mm -hmm. sit at home in this room all day, every day, um, making, even though we don't know what grief is like, it varies from person to person. I don't want to extend it or make it any worse than it has to be. Mm. So I need to get active. And if I'm going to get active, let's get paid for it. So um, wow. I have a job and I'm in, I'm, I'm loving it. I Ooh. am really loving it. I feel like I'm a part of something. I I'm a giver. So that, that was my nature. So I can't be still, I can't sit at home. So being a part of Amazon or just, it could have been anything. It just, it, it is, it is fought, helped me fight. Um, just being in bed all day and reliving the memories and what could I have done differently and how much I miss her. So uh, that is just helping me stay active, getting physically fit and, and being a part of something that's productive. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And then, um, of course, you going to say something? Oh. Yeah. Hi, Latrice. Hi. <laughs> hey. I was going to ask, like, I, first of all, I think that is phenomenal that you kind of really leaped outside of your box for yourself. You know, that's something difficult for I think all of us to do is to say, I'm going to do something different for me, especially coming out of being a caregiver, you know, how, but how, what did that process look like? I mean, we're talking about increased pay Amazon, you know what I mean? Um, I think that speaks volumes because it's like, I'm willing to do whatever's necessary for my peace of mind, for my wellness. Yes. You know, and I think that's what's blocking a lot of people is the ability or the confidence to step out yeah. because of pride. But yet that one thing could be your breakthrough. That one thing could carry you to that next level. What did that process look like to kind of just, it is, this is about me. I'm not, I'm not concerned about anybody else right now yeah. for my health and my happiness. Um, when I was sitting in that lobby, I was, I felt, I, I told, I was like, I'm dying. I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to go home. I don't know what's next. I'm, I, I felt like I was dying and I was like, what am I going to do to throw myself this lifeline? And for me, throwing myself lifelines have been a part of my life because at my heaviest, I was 270 pounds and I, it, but, but that was all I saw around me. I remember that. So when I started acting more and taking more theatrical shows and start seeing something different, it was like, I got to throw myself a lifeline. So this isn't the norm. So mm -hmm. I've always been in touch with myself and always wanting better and always wanting to evolve and improve. So when I felt like I was drifting, fa like fastly drifting away from that again, I was like, what am I going to do to save myself? And it, for me, it has never been about what people think or yeah. how it's gonna look. It's just all been about been about, always been about how I feel about myself. Because there were moments early in my journey when I would look at myself in the mirror and I did not like myself. Mm. Yes, from that moment on, on, it has always been about you. I need to figure out what I need to do so I can like me, so I can feel good about me, so I can get back to my happy, so I can get back to me. So. It was never a thought of what are people going to say or how is this going to look. It's I'm saving myself. Oh, that's wow. I'm just trying to get through this moment by mm -hmm. any means necessary. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about not liking yourself, I've been through that. So how did you, you know, I started boxing and I know sometimes I would box and cry because it was so hard just showing up. Yes. Just showing up and just saying, I can do this. And I literally would be crying sometimes while I'm boxing, but I would keep doing it. Yeah. And for you to have this weight loss, maybe that's 100 pounds, 90 pounds. I mean, yeah. what was those days like when you had to fight those negative, those negative demons and thoughts? Knowing, what, uh, uh, remembering your why. Always, re for me, it was always remembering my why. And um, I've learned to create a model for myself, like a mission statement. You know how most companies have mission statements. I'm, I'm my own walking business. So I had to create a mission statement for myself. And pretty much that was, um, why am I doing the things that I'm doing for my physical, my physical health? Um, it, it stimulates me mentally. It keeps me sharp. And one more important why was, why do I keep going to the gym? Because 
I want to look at my image on Broadway or back on a virtual taping or on a movie and not feel like I got to give a disclaimer. Well, y'all know the camera add 10 pounds. You know, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I want to feel good about myself without having to make any disclaimer. So that is what is like, you remember your why. And remember this mission statement. And there were there were times there even recently there were times. My mother's birthday was on December the 11th. I said, you know what? We're gonna get up and go to this gym. And whatever mm -hmm. happens after that, it happens. At least you made it to the gym. I was mm -hmm. on the treadmill crying. Wow. Because I was just thinking about not because I didn't want to be there, just thinking about wow. I remember last year this time we did wow. this, and two years ago we did this. But it's just something about that that exercising, those endorphins that just kind of you can have that moment, but you can't stay there. It's impossible to stay there. Yeah. So that's why yeah. I said you're gonna work out and whatever happens after that, it happens. And the yeah. rest of the day was it was okay. You know, I had my moments, but I was equipped to deal with them. Right, right. So yeah, I, I wanna I wanna say this. So I don't believe in coincidences ever. Absolutely not. And, and you know, with one of my hosts, Nicole, is traveling home, and so I have OJ sitting in today. Oh. And so for me, with OJ, his father was such a matriarch of the family, and um, I wanted to know what words you would tell him right now of what he could do to help him through. Because sometimes, as believers, we feel, well, we're believers, so hey, we know where they are. But no, there's a journey, and my father, you know, went home last year. Your mom and now OJ's, you know, father unexpectedly. So, what words would you say to him right now that could oh, help? Him too? I'm gonna piggyback off what you said. We are believers, but we are not superheroes. That's right. You have to allow your yourself whatever okay. moment uh, happens and how it happens and however you express yourself. Give yourself permission to to be in that moment and not feel yeah. like you gotta rush it. Give yourself permission to cry. Uh, yeah. Maybe the next few seconds laugh without feeling like, oh my God, I am cracking up. I am not yeah. myself. Yeah. You are very yeah. much, yeah. You are very yeah. much yourself because grief is laughing, it's crying, it's doing something, it's doing nothing. We don't know. We we can't define it. Um, and I'm not. I wouldn't dare say. You know, just pray and you know keep believing God. They're in a better place and they're happier. Yeah, but I miss her. I miss That's those right. moments. I miss being able to pick up the phone and call her. I miss talking to her. I miss her cutting me down and you know her sarcasm. So just allow yourself the freedom to have whatever moment you have at any given time without feeling like you got to rush through it. You know, right. if, it, if it's five years from now and you're still dealing with it, that's your process. Um, yeah. I also, I would definitely say get counseling, you know, yeah, help somebody to go, go to somebody to help you navigate through this. That's right. Um, that's right. Because we don't, I'm, I was just at a loss. I was like, what do I do? with this right. pain what do i do with this void so um also um i i signed up for this email group uh they don't they don't bombard you but grief share grief share.com and they send you devotionals every morning to kind of help you be okay with whatever moment you have and then okay. at the end of it they give you a scripture or they give you a prayer or they give you some type of hope you know so i would definitely say counseling Grief share and uh, allow yourself the freedom to feel whatever you feel at any moment. Man, woman, it doesn't matter. You don't have That's to right. man up. You're a believer, not a superhero. Oh, that is really, really good. You, can you, can you guys unmute your mic? Yeah. Well, OJ actually uh, went out. I'm not sure if he took a moment because he's, you know, but, but I'm letting him know that he could uh, come back and listen to your. Right. What you you can watch it back later, man. That's powerful, powerful, powerful. Chris, you're gonna say something to her? No, oh, okay. I just unmuted. <laughs> if you also be looking at I'm trying to make sure I share it on, on my Facebook page, so that's what I'm yeah. trying to do. Yeah, all, right. yeah, all you gotta do is go to my page, hit, hit that share button. And... Yep, yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, OJ, she she done, she, woo, she she done spoke to you, man. I was gonna have yeah, to speak to you. Yeah, it just <laughs> cut off, and I was like, I okay, so so we're not superheroes. Yeah, super what? We're not we're believers and not superheroes. Yeah. So amen. Give yourself, give yourself the freedom to feel whatever you feel at any moment for however long you feel it. You know, there's no time on this thing. Uh, right. so I would say briefly, sometimes grieving is laughing. Sometimes it's crying. Sometimes it's doing nothing. Sometimes it's doing something. So just go with it without feeling like, cause I felt like, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. I am not myself. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm emotionally unstable. That was the yeah. thing I kept saying. I hate feeling emotionally unstable but yeah. that's grief and it's not emotionally unstable it's very healthy so just yeah. allow yourself that freedom to 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 feel because yeah. in order to in order to heal we have to feel that pain yeah. yeah and i appreciate that and for myself and and i know that's confirmation because there's other people who've spoken that into my life yeah. and i and for me and i think you understand this because you was touching on it before how People will see you in a certain light and they say, I wish I had your life. And 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 sometimes I think we feel like, well, I've had this certain amount of success and whatever, and I'm a big brother to this person or this person. And 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 we feel like we have to be that strong pillar at all times, even in the time, uh times like these when when you lose a brother-in-law and you lose a a, a father who's a hero and and all within this one two weeks, all that going on, and you still feel like you have to be the pillar because people still, honestly, who are close to you and from afar, still look to you as that. Um, and it's just just on the case of just because you've had certain a certain amount of success. So what you just said, and you said it, and there's other people and friends of mine like yourself in the industry that have said it. And I appreciate that because that's that means God is confirming it over and over again, and that, and that, that's that's a word for me. So I appreciate that, and I love you so much, and it's good to see you too. I love you too. It's good to see you too. <laughs> yes. Wow, I, I I wrote that down. Uh, let's try griefshare dot com. Yes, griefshare dot com. They send you emails or uh, yeah, little messages every morning. You know, nobody is bombarding you. You can read it if you want to. If not, but it has really been very instrumental. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, Toya. Hi. Hi, Hi, Hi. everybody. Hi. Hey. hey. So, um, Latrice, you are, of course, you started, and you, I mean, you're a PK kid. You know, <laughs> the Pace sisters, the Clark sisters. How do you expect for yourself as an individual just to be where you are right now? How do I say that first part again? How have you said to, you know, separate yourself where you're like starring in so many things, you know, because you've been a part of the Pace Sisters, but also now Latrice, you know, it, how did you It just kind of happened. It, um, it, it reminds me of when God does a thing, he does it well. And it wasn't anything I had to try to do to say, I'm this now, I'm a solo artist. It just kind of evolved to where, um, uh, I knew that, okay, it was time for, I was getting these songs and I knew it was time for me to um, not let my voice be heard, but I guess to relay whatever sound heaven was trying to get through to people, get to people through me. That's mm -hmm. the best way I can express it. And it just kind of happened. It just, it just started evolving. And I just rolled with it because I trust God when he says it's time to do something. And when he said it was time to do it, he made the provisions for it. So I was like, okay, this is, this is really him. Um, and although I'm very much a part of the group, um, it just, it just, it just kind of happened that way. People started seeing me as an individual. I think also being in Tyler Perry's production, being in a Robert Townsend production, all that, they, they saw me as an individual as well. And not just as a singer, but also as an actress. So yeah. that's, I believe that really helped. Yeah, I saw you at Robert Townsend when we cast you. Yeah. actually started getting into the actress part of you. Yeah. You know, and transitioning that for the stage. Yeah. But it brought you today, and now you're like starring in Black Nativity. Tell us about the show. Oh, that show is so amazing. Every year I say it's what we need in this time because every year we're dealing with something. And in whatever we're dealing with, we need that message of hope. 
that is simply what that that the the production is about. And of course, it was it's an adapt an adaptation from Langston Hughes' original production. Robert Connor took it and he put um, a, a few uh, more modern songs that everybody can identify with and sing along with and really relate to and remember. Um, as well as it's about our culture. You have mm -hmm. dance, you have, we have the anthems, we have the hymns, we have praise and worship, we have some good old church, we have the theatrics, we have a, the Margot Moore in there. So you have everything that embodies our culture, but mm -hmm. it's still, anybody can watch it and just have that hope that we need during this time. Wow. So I play the role of Sister Frankly, and she's uh, one of those old church mothers that'll just tell it like it is. She really thinks she's the pastor, but um, she's just the church mother that's just kind of running things. And she's really mother pace. I just, I just take <laughs> what I've seen my mother do throughout the years. Not like she tried to run things, but mm -hmm. just she had that spiritual authority, you know, that um, that just demanded your attention. So that's 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 what I do in Black Nativity. Wow. And how can we watch that? It's virtual now, right? Yes, it's virtual through December 31st on, oh my Lord, not StreamYard. <laughs> oh, the cross of uh, StellarTickets.com. Right, right. Okay. StellarTickets.com. Okay. Yeah. And you said you were going to sing the Black Nativity songs or your song or one of those songs for us as we go on this interview. Well, the song in the Black Nativity is, um, is more of a churchy song with a choir. But right. what I could either oh, yeah. do right now, yeah, is uh, Dunny Hathaway this Christmas or my single, single this Christmas. It's up to you, whatever. It's up oh, to y'all. Right. I mean, what do y'all think? This Christmas? Which one? Her single is like, first? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Doc, this Christmas or which one? This oh, Christmas. But, oh. This Christmas? Uh, both. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're single. You're going to get your treats now. You know. You yeah. what? You're gonna get you. You 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 don't decide. You're gonna be singing two songs. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, I mean, so let's start with this one. Y'all gonna have to help me. All right. Y'all gonna be my okay, little. Okay. Okay. Help you. I, I hope y'all can hear it. Can you hear it? Yeah. 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 Hey. I need my mouth. Oh. I'm a clown, y'all. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna get to know you better. This Christmas, and as we trim the tree, how much fun it's gonna be together. This Christmas, fire star blazing bright. We're caroling through the night. No. 
very special Christmas for me. Let me tell you, <laughs> you know a real artist when the artist can sing your favorite song and make it their own. Oh my That's goodness. It. Yeah. I hate yeah. it. You know what I'm talking about all <laughs> night. For real. I'm being honest. I've been singing all day. I was like, okay, we got to make some adjustments here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, yeah, so, yeah, I heard you. But Thank that's so dope, you. though, because nobody can tell. Thank and, you know, that's from a musicianship standpoint. That's so awesome. I want to tell you. Uh, I want to. I want to tell you. I had to ask me those trees. So I think. I think when I was in the show it was like five, almost five, almost five years ago. Yeah. And I think that was the first time. Um, that I don't know what happened. God just came in the room. It was. Yes. Uh, yeah. I forgot, I forgot the name of the song. Uh, it was the, the probably the worship medley with worship. The, um, in the presence of the king and yeah. we. So we exalt thee. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. That's what it was. That's what it was. And I think that was the first year because Robert was like, wait a minute, what just happened here? Yeah. Um, amazing. And I know you know what I'm talking about because when you were part of a show, any show, um, you, those are the memories that you just kind of like have for a lifetime. Yes. You know I mean, and those bonds you kind of have for a lifetime. When you talk to a person, or see the person three years or four years down the road, you just know that moment. Yeah, you remember that moment, that. those experiences that you went through, and that was that type of moment. And the funny thing is, like, and I, I've seen that like three years later, four years later, five mm -hmm. years later, I don't know what happened this year, this would be the fifth year, but it's still happening. Yes, yeah. without, without it trying to happen because it's yeah. always, yeah, Isn't that amazing. Yeah, it is. I and I. I believe it has nothing to do with any individuals because just as you said, when you were there, it happened. And then even when, with, as the cash changes, it happens. Right. It's right. just God simply being faithful and being who he is that where there are two or three gathered, right. he will, he have made an agreement to show yeah. up. Yeah. So it's him wanting to have God encounters with his people, with his children, with those that he loved, regardless of the cast, regardless of your vocal abilities. There have been times when the girl that lead the song, she voice just went. Really? She did what she could and God still showed up because he's wow. always, he's constantly putting us in situations where it's like, I don't want you to rely on this gift. Yeah. I don't want you to rely on this talent. I don't yeah. even want you to rely on what happened the last time. I want you to make sure you seek me and make sure I show up because it's always about him. It's always him that makes whatever happens happen. So it's yeah. God encounters. Yeah. Man, man, I'll never forget that. And I mean, I'm always grateful to see it. Yes. You know, I, was talking to, I was talking to Q. Um, uh, this was like two yeah. years ago. And he was like, oh, you got to come and see what happened. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like so blessed being in the audience. And I'm and I just be real, like 
when it happened the first time, but I was in my life, still being a Christian, but I wasn't there. You know, I wasn't riding that path at that time because I was touring and I was doing some things I probably shouldn't be doing. And my mom, you know, you my head, huh? yeah, you know. so, <laughs> right. So, you know, I just, you know, I was in that, path, but, but, it was, but it was what I needed. Yeah. It, was yeah. what, it was what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I have a question too. You know, you guys go see Black Nativity because it's yes. powerful, yes. and that's what we're talking about is how powerful it is and how God just takes over. So, Latrice, we have a question that came in yes. and said, "Now that you've sort of arrived in terms of your success, Taylor Perry Productions, all the stuff you've been doing, how do you guard against losing yourself to all the distractions that that may come with it? How do you stay grounded and true to yourself? Uh, stay connected to God." because he he will pull you in oh my goodness there's my mother always said there's never a reason to be nasty to anyone um and i know that there are times where many of us may have met some celebrities on bad days or whatever but mm -hmm. when i believe when you are connected with god when you have relationship not just you know, you hitting the miss. And I saying you got to talk to him every day. You're just in relationship. You know him. He's living in you. You're dwelling in him. He will pull you in check. You know, get yourself together. You didn't say that quite right. Go back and speak to that person. If, if you know them or not, he he just keeps you in check. He keeps you grounded. There, There's never, I don't buy into all of the fame. I, I tell people all the time, don't drink the juice. <laughs> we are all human. We are all trying to get somewhere. You know, that was a success, but my entire life is not a success because I'm constantly trying to get to the next thing or trying to make sure I please God in the next thing. So my relationship with him and that just, that keeps me grounded because he reminds me that if it weren't for him and his grace, I, 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 I'm I, just dirt. That's it. Got it. Got yeah. it. And there's so you many people moments. talented. There, there are a million people that can out sing me, but we all will have various opportunities. So never get beside yourself because we are all replaceable. You know? That's so, right. Yeah. That's right. Do you, do, do you go ahead. Someone else saying something? Okay. I don't want to take over. <laughs> I was going to ask you, um, you said earlier about like, you know, not liking yourself sometimes in the past. Does that creep up sometimes where you are now having to fight that back off or do you feel you totally overcome that? I, there are times, I'll say there are times I have to deal with self-doubt, but no more of the self-loathing. Um, mm -hmm. Because one of the things, there were two things God gave me. I was looking in the mirror. He said, all right. I was like, oh, I'm tired of feeling this way. He said, all right, get a list, right? Get a piece of paper. And he made me create two columns. On the first column, he said, label it things that are in Latrice's power to change. Then the mm -hmm. other column, things that are in God's power to change. And the things that were in my power to change, I stopped hating them about myself and started doing something about it. You know, I stopped eating so many, you know, French fries and burgers. And, you know, I started doing protein shakes and Caesar salads and I started walking, you know, so the things that are in your power to change, change them. So yeah. you can start seeing yourself the way that God see you. That was another thing. I, my One of my affirmations every morning was God, help me to see myself the way you see me, you know, help me to love myself the way you love me. So I don't really deal with the self-loathing. Um, I, some, there are I think. Anybody that has lost a, 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 a significant amount of weight, you deal with body mis dysmorphic issues because you will always see yourself as 270 pounds sometimes. Even though I've lost 110, I still sometimes see, oh, 27, I got so far to go. I just I just have to deal with myself, my self-confidence, but not really the self-loathing anymore. Right. That's wonderful. Wow. That's amazing. And then I want to say, so Toya... You posted something today that I don't know, was it today you posted it? I don't want to read it to you, that's right. She said, because despite every lie we hear from every seller of things on earth, it is not a woman's job to get smaller and smaller in body, voice, or opinion to take up less space until she disappears 
so the world could be more comfortable. You posted that, Toya. I love it. <laughs> yes. So I did. I mean, I think, you know, especially as women, it's always so much pressure constantly to be, you know, a certain image, a certain body type, a certain way, yeah. you know, and, you know, it's just, you feel it, even if nobody ever says it to you, it's something that you just can walk outside and feel the pressure. And so, you know, even with your story, it's so beautiful. You're talking about self-loathing, the difference between self-loathing and the dip in self-doubt. That, you know, I think doubt is something we'll always, you know, it just doesn't go well. I'm at the place where I never doubt. Or complete confidence. I don't even know if that's a real place where you just arrive at just confidence because your confidence is always tested by, you know, in different scenarios. But to say, like, I no longer self loathe, I really want, because it sounds good, but I really want you to specify what that, what does self loathing look like? And then what does self doubt look, look like? And you move from that to, that for me uh it the self-loathing was i was picking out i was picking myself apart like looking in the mirror look at your skin you know you you got all these bumps and you got acne you're just horrible and oh look hair long off. it's so fine and thin oh look at you with your big old self this is why nobody will love you and this is why you're alone and this is why your husband cheated and this is why he keeps cheating it was mm. i was I was tearing myself apart mm -hmm. and I didn't, I, I really, I, I just knew that I didn't like the way it was making me feel on the inside. And I was like, God, I don't like feeling this way about myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started making the list. It was like, okay, if I'm not liking this about myself, I'm not doing it to get anybody in my life. I'm not doing it to get anybody back. I'm doing it because I want to see what God sees in me. Mm -hmm. So that was the self-loathing. Yeah. The self-doubt, it was, <laughs> you don't go to that audition, girl, because you know you may not get it, or you're not in the best voice today, or no, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I'm going to get up there and do what I do and let it fall, with, let the chips fall where they may. You know. So that's self-doubt. For me, just getting over that self-loathing was, those things that I was picking apart, okay, I can get smaller. I'm, I may not be skinny, but I can get smaller. I can get healthier. I can start a skin regimen. You know, those just, I, I just want it to be better. So yeah. whatever you're picking apart about yourself, change it. Yeah. It's in your power to change. So stop talking about it or stop waiting for somebody to come in your life to make you feel good about it so you don't challenge yourself to the next level. No, you change it for you. Okay. And it's so crazy. Like some of the stuff we say to ourselves, if someone came to us and was like, I'm so this, I'm so ugly, I'm so fat, I just can't do it. You would be like, girl, like, yes, you can. You can do it. You got this. But we don't do that for ourselves. Like we will give everybody a confidence boost. We'll give everybody grace. We'll tell everybody they can do it. Everybody that they're beautiful. Everybody like, hey, you can make it. And then our own self-talk is so evil. Yes. So so you know it doesn't, it didn't come from you. Like that's not your voice. Right. Your words. You right. know what I mean? And that didn't come from you. Yes. So mean to ourselves. So non grace gracious so hateful to ourselves like you should have did this better and you know you like we don't give ourselves any love like i remember one time like i was reading the love chapter we all know it in the bible and love is this love is this and then instead of me looking like love is patient with someone else i read it like love is patient with yourself yes. You know what I'm saying? Love is kind to yourself first. Yeah. You know, like you always look like people oh, patient. You have to be patient with other people. You have no patience with yourself. You know what I'm saying? I have to be kind to everybody yes. and kindness to ourselves. Yes. And 
Well, I think that's so important just thinking how we're talking to our families. Yes. You know, how much room and space and grace we give ourselves outside of other people before we can do it for anybody else. We yes. can do it for ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That is so true. I remember going to a counseling session and uh, the therapist asked me, what is it that you look for in a friendship? You know, what what are some just non-negotiables? And I was, you know, naming up loyalty and all of this, all of this stuff, you know, and he was like, okay, I need you to be that for yourself. So that is so on it. That is so yeah. on it. Yeah. Is that, that, that's powerful, Latrice. Be that for yourself first. Absolutely. So do you still do the ongoing therapy now? I for the question, what, you still do that now? Not for not as often as I was, but I I do because it's just like a tune up on your car, you know, just self check checking in, like okay, am am I? I feel like I'm doing good, you know. I have my days, so and that's normal. So it's like okay, making sure I'm processing this, um, I, I, as well as I can, you know. I'm I'm feeling good as long as I'm active. I'm, I'm, it's just, it's not in my DNA. My brain is wired to be doing something. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, that's when I know it'll set in. So as long as I'm being productive and not avoiding, because we were making sure we were not avoiding um, dealing with the loss or avoiding dealing with whatever you're doing with, dealing with my busy work, but making sure you're you're dealing with it and yet uh, some type of productive activity. Mm, that's good. So, yeah, I do yeah. still go, but just not as I don't have to go as often. Right, right, right. So what what is on your agenda next? Because the truth, I want to tell you that you really, you really have surpassed everything that I even thought about you. I mean, from caregiver to your mom, to losing over hundred pounds, to being so transparent, being on every stage that I've seen, every show you poured for all these years. And be so transparent about where you are and your struggles. I mean, I really applaud you for sharing your story and your life as transparently as you do on your page and just everything. So, what is what's next for the tree? Oh, I wrote uh, with a friend a one woman. Show. Well, he really wrote it, and I kind of tweaked it and added my little thing. A one woman show. Mm. It's pretty, it's pretty much about my life growing up in a family of. Uh, 10 people, all entertainers who sang rings around me. And that's self-doubt came in there because I was like, I'm next to the baby and they're all singing like this. I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to sing. Just let me teach because I will never be able to add up to them. So um, I deal with all of that from my first Tyler Perry show and how that helped me to see that I can do this. I, I do have a gift. I do have a talent. I have a voice and I have an audience. So my one woman show just deal with all of that from my childhood to theatrics, to caregiving, uh, to now. So I'm, I'm working on that. I put it on pause because I wasn't in the mindset at the, you know, just dealing with the loss. It was like, let's, let's just put everything on hold. So hopefully in 2021, we'll be able to launch that. That's pretty amazing. And then you wrote a single yeah. that you told me about that you wanted to you were share before we wrap up and let you go. Yeah. That, I, wrote, I wrote a song called uh, Single This Christmas because I've been single for a lot of Christmases. And, uh, <laughs> and I just didn't, I didn't like how um, a lot of my friends and even just people on social media, just like, I don't have anybody. And it was just like, oh my goodness, come on. You love yourself, right? Can you give love to somebody else? Go go buy some toys for a child or, you know, do something meaningful. This can be a happy time. And it's not to say I don't want anybody or never will need anybody. It's just that I'm single this Christmas. It's not long, lonely. It's not daunting. It's not tenebrous. I'm love. I'm going to give love abundantly, you know, so that's what the song is about. And it gives singles different ideas of things that they can do th during this Christmas season. So, yeah. And well, I did all that talking because I'm trying to find the track. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. So, um, my goodness. I love that. What'd you say? 
I said I love that. That that's definitely a necessary message for single people during the holidays. Absolutely. So easy to get caught up in. I don't have a boo, and I don't have kids, and I'm just so sad or whatever. And so many people on that train. So many people with the boo trying to get rid of them. You know. (laughs) My thing is enjoy this single season during the Christmas season because they are both temporary. You know, just enjoy it. Okay, yeah. I found it. Okay. <laughs> it's a little slow, but I hope you I hope you all still enjoy it and get the message. Yes. <laughs> Thank you everybody for tuning in. <laughs> and the single is available on any media outlet. <laughs> Long and so. Can y'all hear me pretty good? It's Christmas again With no one to hold my hand no mistletoe for me, yet I'll decorate my tree. I cocoa just for one, I'll bake cookies just for fun, and watch the show that dances all around. No reason to be down, although I'm single this Christmas. It's not lonely, daunting, or dinner breath. I am love, I have love, and I give it abundantly. Merry Christmas, joy to the world. Glory to the newborn King. Silver bells, angels singing. Ooh. A little retail therapy, indulging all my hobbies. I'll make a toast to self-love. Tis the season to me. Put on my favorite movie. String some popcorn for my tree. Then I'll thank God for all my blessings. He's the reason for this plea. Although I feel this Christmas, it's not lonely, daunting, or tenebrous. I am love, I have love, and I give it abundantly. Oh, for the man on the floor, I am guilty of a dream. For the child and mother, we're all family. To the son without a father, the widow and the soul. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Pace, we love you. Thank you so much. We're praying for you. Thank you for coming on the show. Have a great holiday. Thank you. Thank you. you. I meant village in need of water. (laughs) (laughs) We do. We love you. Thank you for having me. All right. See you later. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a happy holiday. It's our last show till January 2021. We are actually about to bust December and go to January. Wow. Wow, guys. Wow. The time is flying. The time is flying. Yeah, time is flying. Everybody, have a safe holiday. Um, and just, you know, we're thankful. We're all thankful. Find, find something to be thankful for. Love yourself. That was a blessed interview. Just so transparent. You know, whatever you're dealing with, reach out to somebody. Pray. God loves you. He's with you. And all is well. Anybody else have any words to say till January 21? No, we're good. All right. Well, we love you so much. Thanks for joining. We love you guys. Keep us on stay. Love us. We love you too. Talk to you guys later. Be blessed. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. See you later.